Looks right. like Ivan's on mute. Yeah. All right, Patrick. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Trotze, uh, a student at Laurentian University. I help both janitor and we're running DSpace 5.5. I'm in charge to upgrade us to 6.3 when it comes up. Okay, Philip. All right. Uh, we may have uh, some more folks on mute. Uh, Mike, can you do a quick uh, intro? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Mike Martilla, and I work at Georgetown University with Terry, and again, we're using DeepSpace 5.8. Great, and uh, I see in the chat window, um, Ivan and Philip did a quick uh, intro there, so um, hopefully that popped up for everyone. Uh, Tim, could you do a quick intro? Sure. Hi, all. It's Tim Donahue, the DSpace tech lead at DuraSpace, um, and I guess that's that's all the updates I have. I also help with the DSpace Direct uh, service at DuraSpace. Great. Hardy? Uh, let's see. I'll turn on the camera. Uh, I'm Hardy Pottinger. I'm uh, with UCLA Library, and we are currently using DSpace 6.2, um, and although it's following pretty close to the DSpace 6.3 branch. So ev eventually we'll call ourselves 6.3 whenever 6.3 is released. Um, that's it. Great. Mark? Mark Wood, Indiana University in Indianapolis. We run several D spaces ranging all the way from 1.7 to 5.6, and I have a 6.2 just about ready to roll out. Great, thanks. Drew? Hi, I'm Drew Regulus at Johns Hopkins. Uh, we're currently running D space 5.6, and I'm in the process of using Ansible to upgrade that, I believe, to 6.2. Great. And Jason? Hi, I'm Jason Brock, uh, Senior Systems Administrator at Georgetown University Library, and I work uh, with uh, Terry and Mike there on our uh, DSpace infrastructure. Great. Great. Well, thanks, everyone, for the um, intros. And at this point, uh, Patrick, I'll recommend you uh, start screen sharing and uh, um, start your presentation. Excellent. Everyone can hear me? I can. Perfect. So welcome to the DSpace Angular webpage. You might have seen this one before. And I just want to bring us to the quick start location where you can see all the commands to install DSpace. And those are commands that, um, from personal experience anyways, on my systems, it takes a bit of time to do. And I'm here to show you a faster way to get this done. And it's using a bit of technology from Docker. And so how about we just get right into it? I'm going to try to share my other browser window. So we'll see how good I am at this. There we go. Everyone can see Janitor here. Janitor is a project that allows you to uh, essentially work on other open source projects from inside a cloud environment. And so what it does is it provisions the environment for you. It actually compiles and builds it ahead of time. Therefore, when you're ready to work on it, it's already a pre-made environment. So uh, the project that I help out with Janitor actually on my, in my spare time. And so I thought it'd be great to add DSpace to it as well because I was helping out with DSpace. And well, I'm helping out with DSpace right now. And so um, the last couple of months there, I was working on getting this set up. And really, what's great about it is that once you click in this new container button, it takes just a few moments and the environment's provisioned for you. You can see I'm pretty busy with a couple other images there. Those are all containers. Those are environments that are isolated from each other, and they allow uh, me to work on different projects. So for example, if I was focusing on a code review, I could have it in one of these containers. And another one, perhaps I'm working on a new feature in another container. And so there's a couple options when you have one of these containers, you can uh, rename them if you'd like. So we could call this one uh, the demo, if you will, because we're doing a demo today. And so that makes it a little bit easier to uh, to keep track of them, I find. There's also uh, some compatibilities of being able to connect to these, to the system. So we have uh, an ID, it's called Clyde, Cloud9. Um, and this is actually run locally. So that means that the container, kind of think of it like a virtual machine without the operating system in the traditional sense of 
Oh, sorry, without the kernel, I should say. Um, it actually uses the host operating system's kernel. So it's a shared kernel. And what happens is we make these images based on that. And that means that we don't have to provision all these resources to just run uh, a, a, an environment that we can develop in. It actually copies that base image and, and only keeps track of the changes. It makes it very efficient for storing, and that's a bit of the technology behind Janitor. And so here we can see this is a Cloud9. And right away, what's really great about it is we can run a command that's, um, actually I'm not even gonna run it from the terminal down here. We have a list of commands we can run uh, that I've provisioned and one of them is called run server. And I just gotta click on it and the server starts up. And you'll notice uh, if you've compiled the space Angular before, or yeah, essentially if you compiled it because it takes time if you run, if you ran instead of yarn start. And what yarn start does is it compiles the website ahead of time. In our case, we actually compiled it with the building of that Docker image. And so it makes it a lot more faster to get up uh, and, and start it. So in Cloud9, you have this preview feature. It's sort of like a, it's a window to the web inside your, uh, inside your system. I'll just bring it, this window up a bit more. And you'll have the opportunity to see that I have a working DSpace Angular website um, within this environment I built. And I didn't have to wait any time really to get this going. It was already compiled for me. I'd also like to mention as well during this presentation that feel free to just interrupt me and ask away if you have any questions because uh, I'd be happy to answer them, of course. And at the same time, it's probably a little bit easier to ask them along the way because you might be going over a couple of things. Um, so a little bit um, a little bit of a nice thing is that these commands are a bit, maybe a bit small to see. Uh, one's called run server and it does the what I showed you earlier on. We can also uh, tag things like global dependencies, local dependencies. Uh, we can we can automate or sort of make it easier for beginners to to work on the project because we can uh, label different commands and have it have it a little bit easier so you don't have to necessarily remember, oh, what's that command or what's the order it needs to be executed in. I've put it in uh, the order that I think makes most sense from uh, my local testing. And then from there, we can add more commands for various things because I saw we have our, um, I think it's under package JSON. Oh, just sorry, rather. I'll make this a bit bigger if I can. Put that there. I could put this back down. So it's, it's a pretty flexible environment, which is always nice. Uh, so these are like, as you probably know, I'm kind of showing you guys uh, the code that you've certainly probably encountered before. Uh, we can actually automate most of the, we could give build scripts rather, or, or tags to make it easier to run specific commands like this as well. And just a full disclaimer there, I know we uh, we're very strong for running tests, or it seems like we're, uh, it's very important, obviously, to run tests for DSpace Angular. A little bit of a flaw now is I didn't implement that aspect of things yet in this environment. So running tests is actually not something that Janitor can do at this time. Obviously, we could add those dependencies and make that possible. So that would be just something we'd have uh, we would be working on in the near future, and hopefully have that uh, implemented later on. What's really nice as well is that uh, for the JavaScript files, especially in JSON, um, Cloud9 actually has uh, code completion. It's a it's a full-on ID in the cloud. So you really actually aren't doing anything. Um, let me make it a little bit more clear that what we're seeing over here is actually not compiled on my laptop that I'm doing this presentation on. It's done through a server uh, that's called Pal Palmaria in uh, and Janitor's repo repository of servers. So we have servers that we host these projects under. And what happens is uh, you just sort of say that you want a copy of that image, you work on it, and only the changes are gonna get reflected in this environment we're in. What, what that means is that for us uh, at Janitor, it makes it a lot simpler for storage and a lot more effective because we don't have to worry about provisioning an entirely new DSpace environment for everyone. We just make a base image, everyone works off the base image, and the changes are basically um, all that's saved in memory. Uh, so that makes it very, very efficient for, for uh, this type of sort of operation here. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is uh, that this is actually not the only way you can, act, you can view uh, this environment, let's say. 
So a bit earlier on, I said there was a VNC as well. And this could, I'm thinking this might be really interesting for uh, the testing because if we have Chrome installed on the environment, we could actually have it sort of come up here and we could see that coverage test. We could run things. This is another terminal over here. You can run those same commands. So for example, you know, start the one that takes a lot of time in my opinion. Uh, we can have it running here. And it, uh, I think the joke goes on a bit uh, to say that your laptop's gonna run cooler or your device is gonna run cooler because you actually won't even need to compile this on your end. This is all happening on uh, a server. And I believe Palm area is in France. Uh, so it's, it's happening from a server like that, but uh, there's definitely options for improving and adding more infrastructure, which is probably a great thing if you wanna uh, make it a little bit easier for, for to work on things and make it faster as well for some. I heard a mic go on, did uh, anybody have any questions? Okay, just let me know again. So that was a very quick, quick, uh, little bit of demonstration there. Another feature actually we're working on, not, this is actually be testing the demo, uh, the demo effect, let's say, of our presentation today. Uh, we have uh, another ID we're testing right now. We'll see if it works, I'm not too sure. Uh, this is actually Taya, and I think I'm pronouncing that right anyways. This one will actually, uh, when this ID loads, if it does, when we'll have this working, uh, would allow for is actually better Java code completion. Cloud9 isn't ideal for that, but Taya is a lot better for that. And so uh, hopefully with that, we'll have a much better better place for for making easier contributions. Um, so actually, I'd like to kind of focus a bit on the uh, the workflow of how, how to get started with this if anyone's interested. So we're in alpha right now, um, and we're planning on going beta shortly, uh, working on a new design as well. And, that's not really important to the what I want to get at because if you'd like an account and like to work from janitor with eSpace, I just ask if you could let me know in the Slack because uh, that way I can expedite your invitation and to make it uh, a little bit faster for for getting started with this. I, I think I'd like to finish off because I'm getting pretty close to uh, that 14 minute time or so. I'd like to finish off by showing you, uh, I think my favorite feature I was playing with this morning in a new container. Um, so. I know there's a lot of talk about uh, doing code reviews and such with uh, with eSpace, and I think that's excellent. And I want to show you an easier way to do that, actually, uh, at least doing the review part of it. So uh, I remember, I don't know if everyone can see, oh, okay, hold on, get a second. I'm on another browser window for a moment. Um, I'm looking at one of the Angular, hold on, actually, what we'll do instead, I'll bring you with me. It's this one over here. Perfect. Okay, so we can see this authentication by credentials PR. Uh, it's number two hundred and thirty for the D space Angular Angular side of things. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's some comments, and those comments are indicated of certain parts of code that need to be worked on, which is fine. It's perfect. But when you're in this environment, it actually doesn't let you necessarily work on the code at the same time. Really see where it, where it's happening and be able to to troubleshoot that or I'll fix that piece of code um, with the commenter in front of you. What I'm getting at is if we bring you back to that other page, janitor site, what's, what I really like is, and hopefully I'm bringing you to the right one now. I think it's this one. <laughs> so many tabs open right now. All to say, there's this preview tab. Can everyone see uh, this Cloud9 environment? Hopefully I see yes. kind of a green bar. Yes, Excellent. Patrick. Thank you. So repository only for this is actually called DSpace. The repository is called DSpace Angular. Hopefully the caps won't matter. And the pull request is number 230. And with that, it brings up all the comments and the respective codes. And what's really great is you can actually click on them and it brings you right to that piece of code and you can see the comment with, uh, with that piece of code and work on it directly. I think that's, that's really fun to, and pretty quite, quite useful to to be able to work on uh, these sorts of issues. So perhaps this could help uh, maybe make those pull requests reviews a bit faster and more, uh, let's just say more efficient. Are there any questions or anything that's unclear? I'll just pipe in and say this is really cool, Patrick. <laughs> so thank you. So yeah, I like this. I. I my one question, I guess, would be, is, there, is it possible to kind of 
update code and create a pull request from from janitor as well as as part of the second stage of this workflow i just want to make sure i understand your question you mean like pull new code like let's say this pull request is merged to bring that into janitor or um no actually if you're doing okay. local changes say, say the next step is okay you want to resolve these um these comments from art that you have on the right hand yeah. side and you want to fix the code so if you fix the code in your environment is there a way to kind of push that commit back up to that pull request branch um, to kind of complete this work um, th does that make sense I think so I, I just want to be, uh, but I probably didn't put enough emphasis on perhaps, and this might help answer your question, is that you can actually run like Git works in this environment as well. Okay. And so it should like it, it's just like if you're running locally, it's all in the cloud though. Is gotcha. that? Yeah, yeah, that that yeah. that answers that that would answer my question. And I assume that your Git environment is somehow configured into Janitor. Then you're logged in via Git, or logged into GitHub via Janitor. That's a great question. Um, as of right now, Janitor doesn't. Okay, well, I'm gonna say this, but like tomorrow it might be different. <laughs> what I'm getting at is we're actually working on getting that uh, uh, fixed up. Let's say so. Um, as of pre today, let's say or about today, we don't really have a full integration, so it's a lot of manual work. So we're planning on using uh, GitHub's Hub feature to have that more integrated. So the near future, it should be a different story. But for now, yeah, it's not as integrated. Okay. And so, uh, Patrick, I've got a couple of questions for it. As you set this up, like, are you are you subscribed to a, like are you a Cloud Nine customer um, in order to run the Cloud Nine environment, or how, like, is any of are any of these components paid components, or are they all free components? That's a great question. Uh, the license for Cloud Nine is not free in the sense that we can't actually run a commercial project off this but everything else is free. What happens, let me be more clear though, sorry, that was a very convoluted answer. Cloud9, we're running an instance of it. We're just actually running the Cloud9 environment off Janitor. So therefore it's self-hosted. This is actually, I'm showing you Cloud9, but it's truly the Janitor Cloud9. Um, and that means it's entirely free. And so this project's actually supported by IR, uh, I'm gonna probably say this wrong, Iril, I think. Uh, it's a French uh, data center. Uh, organization for open source, Mozilla sponsoring, um, and, and various other companies that help uh, with servers and such like that. And so it, it's really for the benefit of open source. And I thought this could be, DSpace could be a great project to, to benefit from that as well. Yeah, awesome. And, and how well, so I saw you had like a DSpace 4 and 5 image setup. How well has this environment worked with the Java code? That's a great question. Um, actually, I should point out that those are just numberings for the containers, just to identify them. This is DSpace Angular only. I was I was really hoping to have uh, the regular, let's call it DSpace, involved as well. The problem was Tomcat would, took down actually one of our servers when we were running it, something with the resources we have to look into. Um, so for the time being, not DSpace 6, it's really just DSpace Angular. Uh, it was a more feasible thing I could try and just have a demonstration. Maybe we could put more effort into this to have a regular DSpace, let's say. I thought those are the official ways I should refer to them, I'm sorry. Great, thank you. This is really Excellent. cool to see. Uh, can I uh, put a question though to the team? And this might be more particular for uh, Tim actually. Uh, do we end up figuring out who's the Docker Hub owner of DSpace? Uh, we have not yet. I still have a ticket okay. open with Docker, and they have not okay. responded to my ticket yet. I was going to ping them again this week, actually, because it's been about two weeks since that ticket's been open. Yeah, because um, so I, I haven't gotten a response. Okay, thanks. Uh, just keep me posted on that, because I'd really like to give that the, this image to you um, instead of keeping it with Janitor. I think it makes much more sense having it under the DSpace, you know, Docker Hub when we get access to it. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Excellent. Yeah, so that's uh, janitor. So send me uh, a PM there of your email addresses if you're interested. I'll expedite the invitations for your accounts. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Very cool. Pleasure. And at this point now, I will start sharing. And um, I'm going to show it's It'll be uh, remarkably um, similar in, in terms of uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. But um, I'm going to show you all on the back end um, 
using the Code Envy service to uh, to run DSpace. And let me uh, first want to go to the Git repository. If any of this is interesting, I've got some resources here that'll allow you to kind of repeat the the demo that I'm going to show you um, after the call. Um, so I've got a repository in DSpace Labs called DSpace Code Envy. Um, and this, uh, every, every time I play with this, I end up kind of evolving how I'm structuring the repository. So it's, it's likely to be in flux, but um, hopefully at any point, if you're, if you're curious, uh, check out the resources in this repository and give me a, give me a shout if you run into any challenges. But I, I've got a little presentation. What I want to do is explain to you the um, setup that I've got and then show you how I'm able to run uh, a DSpace instance and edit DSpace code purely in a cloud environment. And last week I was traveling, I was caught in a snowstorm, and over hotel Wi-Fi I was actually able to do some meaningful DSpace work because most of what I was doing was happening in the cloud. Um, so I'm, I'm I think there's a lot of promise here to uh, what's possible. So uh, Code Envy is a cloud-based development environment um, built on Eclipse Che. Eclipse Che is a browser-based version of the Eclipse um, IDE. Um, and the IDE itself runs inside of a Docker image. And that Docker image is derived from um, the Eclipse Docker Hub account. Um, it creates um, separate execution environments that run inside of Docker images. And so Code Envy is a commercial service. Um, they offer a free account uh, tier that gives you up to three gigabytes of RAM. Um, and RAM, RAM becomes uh, very important as you're trying to run a hosted version of DSpace. They have a paid account tier where you pay um, $10 per gigabyte per month. And there's some sort of paid account for teams, which I'm less familiar with. So if you work in the free tier of Code Envy, uh, workspace is shut down after 15 minutes of inactivity. Um, but a cool thing is running applications become internet accessible. So if you're curious about the service, this 15 minute um, timer is annoying, but it at least gives you a feel for how the service works it's probably not reliable if you're trying to do any meaningful work. You probably really need a paid account. Um, but the three gigabytes is sufficient for running DSpace um, within Tomcat and for loading the, the sort of minimal DSpace release code into the Che environment. The paid tier gives you four hours of um, inactivity before your server shuts down. So that kind of does allow you to do, you know, meaningful amount of work, step away for a bit, come back and, and still have your server running. Um, what I found is if I create a three gigabyte server, I can run Tomcat and I can load minimal source code, but if I wanna load the full DSpace code base, um, I found I need five to six gigabytes, so to be paying at least $30 a month um, to, to really have a, a fully working environment. And I'll, I'll show you all what that looks like as we go through the presentation. Um, so then there is some sort of code envy, envy for teams. I'm kind of curious how this works. It says the pricing is $20 per user per month. So I, have, I don't know how applicable this could be for an open source project, but just letting you know that that option is there. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna launch um, a work a workspace from Code Envy because it's going to take a while to provision the server, and then I'll uh, come back and continue with the presentation. So here I've got um, my Code Envy account that I'm signed into, and I've got a number of different workspaces configured. I also have something configured called a factory, and a factory provides a one-click um, creation of a workspace. And so in that README file for that GitHub repo I shared with you all. I provide a link to this factory. So if you create a Code Envy account, you can click on this and we'll create the same environment that I'm starting to create right now. So we'll, we'll come back to this um, Code Envy window in a minute. I'm gonna give this uh, a chance to get started. Although, anyway, we'll, we'll come back and see where that, that's at in a minute. 
Oh, and also that I see that that link. I've got a, a link here to create that in environment. So um, Eclipse Che has a few um, concepts built into it. It has what are called stacks, workspaces, and factories. So we just um, made use of a factory to, to load a built environment. So a stack is a selectable Docker image for running code. Um, and a stack can either be a single machine or a multi-machine environment. Um, and at least from what I can tell, at least one machine needs to contain the Eclipse Che infrastructure, so be derived from an Eclipse image um, in order to display the IDE. Um, and they, they offer out of the box MySQL support. Um, so I have created a, a similar environment for Postgres using a Postgres Docker image. So here's some, an example of the stack selection um, process. So here uh, they offer some quick start um, environments. You can say I want a single machine environment or a multi-machine environment. Um, and then you can create a set of commands that run within your stack. So this is similar to kind of the command set that Patrick showed uh, for, for building up the Angular repository. I've got a set of stack commands that will run the Maven process and the ant process and startup Tomcat. Um, and similar to what, what Patrick showed, when you start a task, you can configure a preview link that also is available um, that's correlated with that command. So like when you start Tomcat, then they give you a preview link for um, connecting to Tomcat. And what's cool is it becomes an internet accessible link back to your running Tomcat server. So uh, a Che workspace is a virtual machine that hosts Che stacks. So it's built from a Che stack. It can reference code projects. It has a RAM allocation, and then it's started and stopped. And when you stop a workspace, um, some amount of data is preserved um, when you restart the workspace. So uh, snapshots are, are saved on shutdown. And what I'm trying to get a handle on is somehow these snapshots are saving the content of Docker volumes, but I'm having some trouble uh, figuring out the, the way you pass and configure a volume in Docker seems a little different in this environment, and I haven't yet mastered um, this configuration. So the, this is one of the things that's evolving as I learn more about the service. Um, and project directories are refreshed from Git when you start your workspace. And a factory is a single click replication of a workspace. So where I'm thinking um, if, if we decided this, was, this service was a useful way to approach DSpace development, these factories could be a really nice way to get um, new developers up and running on the environment really quickly with all the dependencies built in for them. So I want to share a little bit about um, the configuration I've got for DSpace and Code Envy. But before I do that, I just want to see. So our um, our workspace is still uh, starting up here in the Code Envy service. Just a cute, cute little crane um, running. So we'll by the time I'm done uh, talking through these slides, we should have a workspace up and running. So we have a um, DSpace Chase stack that. Um, contains a Docker compose file um, to build up our environment. So um, you'll see here, I've got a database image built and I've created and posted under my account a Postgres um, instance uh, that I've called DSpace DB. Um, we're giving it half a gig of memory and we're um, persisting data in this PG data um, area. So, so far, one of the limitations I found working in Code Envy is I can only persist data in home user. Um, so, th this is one of the uh, challenges I'm trying to uh, get a handle on. Um, so, uh, we want to make sure that any Postgres data we create is uh, saved in the Docker image. Um, Next, we have a, what we call a dev machine. So this is the image that's running um, Eclipse Che. It also is running Tomcat. So um, I'll show you what the Docker file looks like for that. 
we're giving it two and a half uh, gig of memory and it depends on uh, the database server. So um, we're not running both Postgres and Tomcat in the same image. We're actually running them in separate images. So we're gonna have to um, make sure we give the proper URL to reference this DB box to access our database. So um, I created the database image using um, some existing work that had been done um, for DSpace and Docker to, to build up the database image. Um, it's essentially uh, built from the default Postgres Docker image, um, but it also makes sure that the PG Crypto um, extension needed for DSpace 6 has been loaded. We also set some environment variables uh, to make sure that we persist data. And so this would be a really useful uh, Docker image. Once uh, Tim gets sort of control of the official DSpace account uh, from Docker, this might be a nice image to post and share. So here's what the image um, looks like. So it's derived from Postgres. It's setting the database user and password all to DSpace, so, so very easy to authenticate. And then it's installing this uh, pgcrypto.sh file um, in a standard location in order to ensure that the PG Crypto extension is loaded. And that file um, is also part of the Docker image. So you'll see we run Postgres or we run PSQL and we create the PG Crypto extension. So that's our database image. Here's our development machine image. So we're de deriving it from Eclipse Ubuntu JDK 8. So this is a Docker image that has Java, Maven, and Tomcat. It has Java 8, Maven, and Tomcat. It also has the Eclipse Che stuff built into it. Um, so here's some ports that are being exposed to make the Che um, editor available. Um, that image does not contain ant. So um, here I've got some additional code to um, install ant into the Docker image. Next, we create a DSpace install directory. And because of the limitation I haven't yet worked around, I'm having to build it in home user. So home user DSpace is our installation directory. And I've created the upload directory within the um, DSpace install directory. Next, uh, what we do is we, so Tomcat is installed in home user Tomcat 8. So I am symlinking from the web apps directory of Tomcat 8 over to the DSpace install directory. So um, any of our uh, web apps can be found. And then um, just providing a default memory all allocation for the command line tasks within DSpace. Uh, so here's what our um, workspace configuration will ultimately look like. You'll see we'll have two machines. Uh, one is a database server with half a gig of allocation. And the next is a dev machine instance with two and a half gigabytes of allocation. Uh, so this is designed to run within the free tier layer. Um, we have a project configured um, within this workspace. So this is... Um, running out of the DSpace code envy repo, which contains um, the release version of the DSpace 6.2 code. And just to show you, here's some um, existing workspaces that I've built um, for myself. So I have a pre-built DSpace 5 purely deployment environment. So this is designed only for testing pull requests for DSpace 5, DSpace 6, and DSpace 7. Those are all running within that three gigabyte um, free tier memory space. I have three environments, um, a DSpace source five, source six, and source seven. So these are running full versions of the whole DSpace code base within the environment. And I found I need six gigabytes to run one of those. Um, so I'm doing all of this with a, six, a $30 a month account. And then I have another flavor of DSpace six that's um, pulling in only the release source code, but is, is meant for doing some editing. So um, here I mentioned this uh, repository. So we've got this DSpace code envy project and a DSpace directory 
which is essentially um, the the DSpace release code base for 6.2 within the project. Um, and then I've got some other files um, within this project, like I've got the Docker images here just to put them under source code control. And I've got a local CFG file um, for customizing the um, installation path. And I'm, I'm planning to, I've got some cleanup of this repository I'm gonna do over time. Um, I've also made two code overrides. So the REST service by default only runs over HTTPS. So I'm disabling some checks to allow it to run over HTTP because Code Envy serves up um, the application over HTTP. And I've also removed the solar localhost restriction um, from the installation so that we can actually access the solar backend um, within one of these test environments. So um, our, until I figure out my issue around volumes in the CHE environment, I've, made, I've modified the local CFG file and I've got that um, in the code repository. So here, here's our local CFG file. We're setting dspace dir to home user dspace. We're setting the database URL to, uh, we're setting the host name to DB and then um, set, making the rest the default dspace is database user and password. And here we're setting the password to dspace. Um, and then I've got some uh, test data that I've added to the uh, sample repo I shared with you all just to have some content that can be easily loaded in the environment. Um, and then we, I've got some commands configured. So I've got a um, command to refresh from Git, a command to install the local CFG file, a maven build command, an ant build command, a create administrator um, command so that we actually have an administrator account that can submit items, and a command to start Tomcat. And then we've set up a preview URL, kind of like the preview URL that Patrick uh, displayed, that will become the accessible path for um, reaching Tomcat. And there's some other um, test data. So now I want to do my demonstration. So um, I am assuming this is done and the image is just, this page hasn't uploaded or updated yet. So I'm gonna to go to my codenv.io dashboard. And if I look at my dashboard, you'll see I've got a workspace, dspace with db8 under bar one. So this is the workspace we just created. So here, um, this, so many of the concepts you're gonna see in this workspace are um, similar to what uh, Patrick showed. So here we've got an IDE. This is uh, using Eclipse Chase. So it's like, here's our um, pom.xml file. So um, this is, uh, you know, depending on the type of file you open up, you'll have, um, uh, you know, language specific um, highlighting for different types of files. Um, there is a Git connection. So I have yet, not yet fully trusted the, um, this service with my main Git credentials. So I have a secondary Git account that has right access to certain repositories, but no administrative um, permissions. So just, just for safety as I'm getting used to this, I'm sort of working with diminished um, Git permissions. Uh, but what I wanna do is go to this commands palette and I'm going to start um, my steps to build up the running instance. So I'm gonna install my local CFG file and I'm gonna run that on the development machine. So now you'll see we have a local CFG file sitting in the base directory. The next thing I'm going, and there's the, our um, home user dspace as our dspace installed directory. Next, I am going to um, run the Maven task. I'm gonna run that on the build machine. And it's gonna go through and run all of its steps. So here I have terminal access to um, the development machine. Is Are you all able to see the terminal I'm working in? Yes. Yeah, we can't, Terry. Great. 
So I'm going to um, list the contents of home user D space, so the install directory. So you'll see there's nothing but an empty upload directory right now. Um, I'm also able to create a terminal window on the inside the develop the uh, database image. So here I've got a database image. I'm going to run psql u d space, and I'm going to list all the tables. So there are no tables yet because we haven't gotten to the um, stage of the install process that um, actually creates the um, database schema. So we've just got to wait um, here for the um, Maven build to complete. So this would be a great time if um, folks have some questions. This is probably going to take two to three minutes to complete. And um, any any questions at this point? So I guess I'll, I'll jump in and just ask um, a question. Is there? I'm assuming that there might even be ways to automate some of this eventually in terms of the actual build process. Like, do you have to go through this build every four hours? Um, no. So the build has it work. Um, when we shut down this image, it will then save everything in the install directory. So oh, you would, okay. You would then only need to rerun the, the build if you modified code. I see. So this is just because it's a fresh image. You got to uh, initialize that image with the build code. Exactly. And we could put all of this, all of these steps potentially in the Docker image or, um, kind of string all of these build commands together, uh, but sort of to help make it clear what we're doing, I wanted to kind of separate each of these into individual tasks. So Maven is done. I'm going to kick yeah. off the ant step. I need, uh, yeah, what's the question? So a lot of this is based on Docker, right? So if there were not to use code envy, but would want to use all the Docker words you did. Is that even, does that make sense? So I would say if you were, if you wanted to do your work in Docker, then I would just probably focus on building really good Docker images for testing locally. Um, this, I, I think this environment becomes really attractive if you like sort of the notion of working in a cloud hosted environment. Um, and having sort well, of shareable uh, environments. Right. Now, I, I, I see, see that point. Um, I have been thinking recently of building a Docker container for some of the administrative stuff I do on my instances. Basically, just have the DSpace being live stuff, the uh, DSpace API, and then run this from a Docker container, separate from where I have my instance installed. And I'm mm -hmm. just wondering how much of your Docker work I could segue off of. Yeah, and, th and that, that's where I definitely need like some other folks to try this out, and maybe folks who know Docker better than me to help maybe give me some suggestions, because I'm finding it difficult even to share so I've just started to work with Docker um, locally on my desktop. And I'm finding, like, I can't use the same exact images. I can use, they can be pretty similar, but because of this volume declaration issue I've run into, I can't share them exactly. So I've, I've got some help requests out to the Code Envy team um, to see if they can uh, help advise me on how to, how to make the Docker images more portable. Yeah, I've, it's also that um, we're working with the Amazon cloud and like I've done some work in another project. And so in theory, you could uh, think about always deploying DSpace even in production from within a Docker container. You can run Docker containers in the Amazon cloud, for example. And I like the way you split the database from the code. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, I will look into the Docker stuff a little bit. What's my plan anyway? <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, and Monica, if you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you make some progress on that and are interested in presenting that at a future one of these, that would be great. 
Yeah, sure. I don't know how much time I get on that topic, right? <laughs> Let's see. All right, so my next step is I'm gonna run the create administrator command. So here um, we're running uh, the dspace create administrator uh, command, uh, passing in all the values um, right here on the command line. So I'm creating a, an account uh, test at test.edu um, with a password of admin. So there, our administrator account is created. So now if I come in and take a look at the database, you'll see our schema has been populated. So the last step I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, go to the commands palette and start Tomcat. And as I start Tomcat, you're given this preview URL, kind of like what Patrick showed. And if I click on this, so it's gonna take a minute, but what's cool is that preview URL becomes an internet accessible um, URL. So once, once the Tomcat is started, we'll actually be able to see a running instance of DSpace at this address. So what I like is the thought of, if you're seeing some really odd behavior in your test environment, you know, it would be possible to reach out to other DSpace developers and say, hey, look at what's happening here. Have you got any suggestions? Um, so anyway, this will, this much like everything else, it'll take like two to three minutes to get um, all of the web apps uh, started and then we'll, we'll take a, a look. So great time for additional questions if people have them. So Terry, I guess I'll jump in again if nobody else has questions. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm curious, um, and maybe this is the next stage here, how, how you kind of can pull in um, the DSpace source code um, to or, or either to, to make changes and create a pull request or how you go through the process of, of testing a pull request. I just am hoping to see a little bit of that workflow or understand how that workflow works in code. Sure, once I, once I um, finish this, I'll load up one of those more fully built environments that I have and show you what it looks like. So I think the Eclipse Che, because it's compiling a bunch of resources at one time, I think just the size of all the third party dependencies in DSpace is causing the IDE to need just a ton of RAM in order to work. So that's where you know, we were originally paying $10 a month. Now we've upped that account to paying $30 a month. So that allows me to have, you know, one pretty good uh, development um, environment configured. But you had mentioned that the free um, account seems to work well for even just testing pull requests. You Is could that accurate? Pull requests. Yeah, you just, um, uh, you know, clone the repository, but don't not open the repository in the IDE. So clone right. it, run all the build steps, deploy Tomcat, and then that that works pretty well in the free tier. So th it would be kind of interesting to see if we could, um, you know, create some sort of automated construction of a running environment with a particular pull request already loaded. Um, I think that could be a really useful way. Like that could be a way we could provide a runtime environment for someone from DCAT to come in and test the application. So I'm going to run, uh, authenticate test uh, at test.edu admin. And um, here we've got our running version of um, DSpace 6.2. And if any of you are interested in um, playing with this uh, environment, let me... Um, See what I can do here. I always have a hard time. There's the chat window. Um, if you all are interested, you can, um, through the URL I, I shared in the chat, you can actually sign in and <laughs> connect to this empty DSpace instance, which is um, not incredibly um, interesting. So the other thing I've done is I've got a, um, a bunch of AIP files. Um, where the um, items are essentially pictures of my dog. And um, I've got another command here that will load sample data from an AIP file. And this will just um, go through, iterate through the collection and item files and start um, adding items into the instance. Um, so this is what I'm thinking of um, 
doing is I, I'm going to uh, host a webinar um, next month to sort of show people how to apply simple customizations to DSpace 6. And I'm going to use this sample data and this environment to show people, hey, here's how you, you know, create a custom theme. Here's how you, you know, apply other very simple changes to a uh, base instance of DSpace. Um, so anyway, uh, slowly but surely, um, now we should be seeing um, items loading into the repository. Although, uh, it may, I think it's going to take a minute for the solar instance to catch up with the content that's um, being loaded here. So what I'll do, um, if, if there's interest, um, I can start up that more robust environment. Um, but if folks have any questions on this environment before I shut it down, um, we can chat about that. All right, well, let me go ahead and I'm going to um, stop this environment from running. So now I'm going to stop and this will take a minute. So it's going to start um, creating a snapshot. So here are all my available workspaces that I have. This current environment is showing up kind of in orange. That's an indicator that it's um, snapshotting the content. So everything that got written to home user DSpace will exist again when we restart the server. Um, but many of the compiled artifacts, if we need to compile again, it'll likely, like the, the target directories uh, built by Maven, those will probably be wiped out um, when we restart. So as this um, environment is shutting down, it's going to take a minute. So I can't start the more robust environment until this three gigabyte environment is um, fully stopped. Actually, I guess I, if I thought about it, I didn't have to snapshot that environment. So I'm going to run through the rest of my slides, and then we can come back and take a closer look at that environment. So, you know, what, what do I think is useful about this? I think, you know, this could be a tool that would be useful for fast onboarding of new contributors, um, particularly folks who just, you know, don't have the ability to, um, spin up new servers or install, um, you know, manage operating systems. This could be a really um, simple environment to provide for them. The ability to create shareable test environments. So, um, you know, th these are somewhat limited in terms of um, storage, but you, you know, if you could replicate a problem in one of these test environments, it could be a nice way to share it with other people and get some suggestions. It's a development environment requiring only a browser. So, you know, like I said last week, I was traveling with a Chromebook and by, you know, connecting to code NV, I was actually able to do some, you know, meaningful testing of a pull request. And a thing I think would be interesting, like um, I was mentioning a minute ago, it would be interesting to auto build a deployment environment with the code from a particular pull request. Um, so to do's, I still need to figure out volume declarations uh, within the chain environment. That's something that's uh, confusing. So if anyone has any interest in looking at that with me, that would be um, interesting to do. Um, I've not yet um, integrated the Mirage 2 build dependencies into the Docker configurations. I know um, that that project I referenced in DSpace Labs for running DSpace and Docker, it had already done some work in configuring the Mirage 2 dependencies. So, so I could probably uh, steal some of that code and get that um, integrated into these Docker images. Um, I was not able to get the DSpace 7 check style stuff configured into Che. So as, as far as I can tell, it doesn't have um, check style support. Um, so essentially, that's uh, that's my presentation. So let's see where this um, server's at. So now everything's shut down. So what I'm going to do is go to my workspace, and I'm going to start the DSpace um, source 6x. That's a 6 gigabyte server. And um, I'm going to run it. and open it. 
So here at this point, it's going to um, retrieve the image and retrieve all of the um, saved data from the snapshot and then um, things will be populated and we'll see the full DSpace code base um, here within the environment. So what, as, as we're waiting for this to, re, to um, start up, what, what reactions do folks have? How, how useful does this look for your potential workflows? I think it looks pretty cool, Terry, on, on my end. I'm, I think the question is the, the $10 a month thing, or the $30 a month thing, I guess, in terms of doing real development. But it still could be quite useful for doing at least pull request testing. Mm -hmm. uh, which is where it seems like at the free tier you can still get some some things done but um, but I still think it's very it's quite cool and neat and it's not that thirty dollars a month is that that pricey it's just that it's a cost of course <laughs> um, but uh but it seems like a very reasonable cost for this sort of environment where you could actually work off of a Chromebook and things of that nature that's a very neat concept for dspace. Yeah, and one of the things, like, I don't know if their team account approach could ever support an open source project where, you know, like, we could, if, if we had someone donating $100 a month to, to pay for a team account, would it be possible to sort of allocate team licenses to different contributors, um, you know, particularly new contributors who don't have the, you know, full kind of infrastructure support that would be needed to, you know, host their own instance, this could be a really great way to, you know, get get some new folks um, engaged in the project, or at least to me, that's that's one of the hopes that I have. Um, unfortunately, because I know cost suddenly becomes a, a factor that makes that sort of stuff difficult. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea and something to track, especially if they, if Code Envy would ever come out with an open source discount of some sort, then it becomes much more doable. Um, but uh, we'll have to to kind of uh, take a look at those costs a little bit and see how how Code Envy starts to adapt as well. So here here now my my larger server has um, initialized. So just to show you all, PSPL dash u in space ah. um, select count. Hmm. So I'm running, I'm running into a slight little delay. So here you, you can see it's reconstituted my database with 16 items I've already loaded. So those are the pictures of my dog. Um, let me, and as we're running this, let me go ahead and start Tomcat and then we'll take a look at the um, IDE. So start Tomcat. So that'll pop up and uh, run. So let's go um, into the DSpace API environment. Um, Name Java D space um, content, and we'll look at collection.java. So here you've got, you know, um, oh, and uh, code syntax um, already set up. Um, we're on the DSpace 6x branch, but here's a bunch of Git controls uh, that are available. Um, so you know, you could make a change and commit those changes or switch to a different branch. Um, also from the terminal, you can run, you know, git command line commands. Um, there is uh, some degree of um, code completion. So let's do uh, this dot, let's see. I have not done um, content assist. So here it's listing for us the, all the methods that are available to this. So, you know, maybe not as robust as your desktop IDE, but certainly not a, you know, um, this is, this is a lot more than a text editor in the cloud. Um, I have a question. So I saw how you were digging into the source structure to find collection on Java. Could mm -hmm. you have used some find me the definition of feature? 
Possibly. So this is where um, I've, I've spent so much time just trying to understand how to build these environments that I really uh, I haven't done a lot of meaningful um, editing in the editor yet. So essentially you're saying it's not a full-fledged Eclipse environment. Uh, I, what I don't know is I don't know how full-fledged it is. I Certainly I doubt it's as good as the desktop, but um, if you like this cloud approach, it's it's probably pretty good. Right. So do you happen to know whether there is an integration for IntelliJ IDEA? Well, this is, this is like, um, I think much like Tim sort of is both the open source person and the DuraCloud person, my sense is Code Envy might be the, the cloud service offering coming from the Eclipse Che open source project. So the, it's de this environment is meant to be running Eclipse Che. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in fact, I'm not sure that there is an IntelliJ cloud environment created yet. Um, whereas Eclipse yeah, that Che would be that a big is a separate. Yeah, Eclipse Che is a separate project of Eclipse, which is specifically building a cloud. Yeah, environment. then they wouldn't do that with priority, at least. <laughs> so just to show you also, we, um, I started Tomcat. Here's um, uh, now the same repository with those AIP packages loaded. And so you can see a picture of my dog with a coat on, uh, <laughs> if you're curious. So anyway, just, just to get a sense of what it's like to have an environment with some actual um, content embedded. So the cool thing by setting this um, environment up this way, as you saw, we, we restored, we had, when we restored, the database was repopulated, the asset store was repopulated. I have two projects running in this environment. One is DSpace, so with the full code base. Um, the other is, I still have this Code Envy project, and this is really designed both to provide a copy of the local CFG file, to provide you know, some AIP packages. So I'm kind of imagining when you configure a Code Envy workspace, you can supply multiple projects to be available to the editor at one time. Um, anything else folks would like to see? I'll just say again, this is quite cool, Terry. I, I like getting to see this live. But yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to hear if anybody else has questions. Yeah, so please do reach out to me if any of you are interested in giving this a try. I'd love to hear how it works for you and see if we could work together to figure out some of these um, things I've not yet been able to figure out. Um, so then what I wanted to do is kind of switch from the Code Envy demo just to chat about upcoming um, developer show and tell meeting. So glad glad to see the turnout today and looking forward to um, having uh, more meetings. Let me our um, the presenter who is slated to um, present the next time is unavailable on the um, date that we have scheduled. So um, we're possibly looking at um, an alternative date. So um, Pascal uh, Becker is has a really nice um, script set up for essentially telling people how to run DSpace with Docker. Um, and then as a complement to that, um, Tom Desaire from Admire has, uh, is gonna present how he tests um, Oracle you, by running Oracle within a Docker instance. So, I think these two presentations will go really well together, uh, but we're not going to be able to um, have that meeting on April 17th. Um, so what I am potentially thinking about, to also this um, May 29th meeting is like essentially right before um, open repository. So I'm gonna propose moving the um, May 29 meeting to May 15th and then changing the agenda item for April 17th, possibly to do, um, what I'd like to do is an IDE showcase just to have, so this, this isn't necessarily cloud environment specific, but just having people um, 
talk about the IDEs they use for DSpace and what they like about it and what configurations that they've done. Uh, so anyway, I'm likely to um, shuffle these topics around. Um, I'm going to reconfirm with the, the speakers and then Tim, I'll, I'll alert you that we might need to update the calendar entries um, for these upcoming meetings. Um, if we do hold a, a sort of an IDE showcase, um, is there anyone here? I, I haven't really confirmed all these speakers yet. Is anyone here interested or eager to show how you use your IDE with DSpace? All right. Well, um, if if any if you if you are interested, feel free to reach out to me offline. Also, if you have you know some potential topics that you'd like to share, go ahead and um, send me a message on Slack or email, and we'll uh, work on getting those um, scheduled for upcoming meetings. Sounds great, Terry. All right. Well, thank you all. Thanks and what, uh, once uh, once a video is released, uh, we'll go ahead and I'll I'll share that out as well, and we'll um, post it here on the wiki. So anyone who is unable to attend today will be able to watch that. Excellent, and thanks again, both Terry and Patrick, for showing us a couple new development environments. This is cool stuff that I plan to dig into myself. I know. All right, thanks everyone for uh, joining us. Well, this is great. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yep, bye.